How to rebuild a Stuart Models 5A steam engine, this is part 6. Using a keyway brooch to cut the keyway in the flywheel. So first of all, I needed to buy a keyway brooch because it's something that I've never had in the workshop. So I went to RDG Tools and bought one. And here it is. I need to cut a keyway that is 3 sixteenths of an inch wide in the flywheel. The problem is, the keyway brooch itself is too big to go into the hole. The hole in the flywheel is 5 eighths of an inch in diameter and this thing just wouldn't fit. So what I had to do is grind off some of the metal from the underside of the tool so that it would fit in the hole and allow me to cut the keyway. And to make a neat and accurate job of this, I used the belt sander. And it took quite a while and I burnt my fingers on several occasions but eventually it fitted in the hole and the process could begin. After I drove back from RDG Tools, I called in at Blackgates because I needed some more bits and pieces. And here they are. Very soon in this series, the engine is going to need painting. And I'm going to use this colour. This is British Railways Loco Green. It's a big engine. I'll be painting it with a small brush. And this festival of painting will be happening very soon. I'll show you the other parts that I bought. These are a couple of pieces of good quality cast gun metal. And I'll explain why I bought these in the next episode. I also bought some stainless steel bar. This is 5 sixteenths in diameter and I'm going to make the main valve rod out of one of these pieces. And the reason that I bought more than one of them is because I like to keep things like this in stock. You never know when you're going to need a piece of 5 sixteenths of an inch diameter stainless steel. And I also bought some silicone o-rings of the correct size for the oil seals. That's enough stalling, it's now on with the job. And here's the keyway brooch and you can clearly see where I've ground away the edges underneath. I got a good finish on the underside of the tool because it's actually touching the metal of the flywheel and had it have been rough, it would also be cutting grooves in the underside, which I really didn't want it to do. I do not possess an arbor press, which is the normal way I believe that you push a keyway brooch through the work. So the keyway brooch is mounted in the tool post and I just move it back and forth. In fact, I moved it back and forth a great number of times advancing the tool only a thou or two every time. This seems to be quite a good way to do it. And the other thing is it doesn't put a lot of stress on the flywheel because you control exactly the amount of cutting pressure that you put on it. On this flywheel I wanted the keyway to be quite deep because I've seen many instances of shallow keyways that get damaged easily. So this one's going to be deep enough to take a substantial key. The principle that I showed using a parting tool in the last video was meant to be a demonstration to show an alternative and it's still a good way of cutting a very small keyway in a very small flywheel. But in the video showing the use of a parting tool to cut a keyway, I got some really nasty comments from viewers. The whole point in making these videos is to show people how to do something that I've been doing for years. This video being the exception to that because this is the first time I've ever cut a keyway using a keyway brooch. But anyway, vile comments like I received from some viewers about the last video really roll off me like water off a duck's back. I've been around, I'm not easily upset. All viewers' comments come to me first for approval. Some of the comments contain foul language, and some of the comments are really bad, so I don't let them through. Any comments that are of a sexual nature or spam I don't let through, and I also never allow links to be published that people send in. Some of them are innocent enough and some of them are actually quite interesting, but that's not the point. I didn't set this channel up to advertise other people's products. At the moment on screen, I'm using the shim that came with the keyway brooch to give me the final depth of cut. Nice and deep. It will take a substantial key that will be very strong and not easily bent. And here is the finished keyway. And all it needs now is a suitable key to fit it. And here's how I made the key. I put a piece of steel in the machine vise on the milling machine. This piece of steel I roughly cut from a piece of angle that I found. You will notice that during this milling process I'm occasionally holding a paintbrush close to the milling cutter. That's to stop the chips flying off and burning my hand. It's a good idea to have a brush near the milling machine at all times but preferably a brush with proper bristles. This one has synthetic bristles and the heat of the chips are making the chips stick to the bristles, which is not good really. But it's still better than getting frequent burns from the chips as they land on the back of my hand as I turn the handle. This milling process is running now in real time and you can see exactly what's happening 
and I keep having to move the brush just so that the camera can see the milling cutter. When I first started making these videos it was a bit of a hobby and the idea was to put something back to share my experience with people and of course it's free. Here it is on YouTube, totally free and that's the way I like it. Regular viewers may notice that recently my output has increased substantially. I'm making a lot more videos and spending a lot more time in the workshop, which I like very much because of course it is my hobby. And any revenue that I get from the channel was initially by the number of clicks that viewers made on the adverts at the beginning of each video. And I even get messages saying, I like your videos but I wish they didn't have those annoying adverts on the front. I know I'll just do it completely for free and I'll spend about 35 hours a week doing videos just for the benefit of a few viewers who don't like the adverts at the front of the videos. And talking about videos, it's now back to the video in progress. The key is in the keyway, albeit the wrong way round, and I'm just tapping the key out because it's too tight. I'm using a piece of brass for this so I don't mark the steel. Most of the rest of the process is handwork. I'm using a needle file just to trim the key so that it fits in the keyway very tightly but not too tightly. When I measured the keyway brooch and measured the slot in the crankshaft, I did notice that the keyway brooch was slightly larger than the slot in the crankshaft. So here I'm just trimming the slot with a needle file. And now putting the key in the right way around, it's getting to be a very good fit. Really, I could hammer this home, but I don't want to do that. It's still too tight. So I'm tapping it out once again with a piece of brass. And now it's time for some very fine adjustment. This is a critical stage in the manufacture of a key. Many times when I've made keys, I've just got it right and then taken it too small, and it's a rattle fit. So I'm using some wet or dry sandpaper, followed by Scotch-Brite, to finely adjust the key. And once again, a little tiny bit more with the needle file in the slot in the crankshaft. And now you will notice that the key fits very well. You will also notice that I haven't hammered the key all the way into the flywheel. That's so I can get a screwdriver blade behind it to lever it out when I want to remove it. That's about it for now. The flywheel is key to the crankshaft. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.